um a uh, technical problem tem kan neya min lo she thiam lo don ya o chon in tuna chon kan program kan lo chan don to a um all right everyone a very good morning to everyone we are pleased to welcome you all to this personality development program as we all know this program has been organized under the guidance and initiatives of our respected principal mr lero zwanga pacho and internal quality assurance cell of government shambana college and this program has been going on since last monday today is the fifth day of the program and today's program is hosted by department of geography government shambana college i pc Tlandiani. Um, on behalf of uh, Department of Geography, uh, once again, uh, warmly welcome you all to this program. Today, uh, we have for our topic, empowering through traditionally inherited skill enhancement with the resource person as Dr. Zhou Tansigi Kiangte from Boroland University. Our outgoing students are really fortunate to have this personality development program being organized by the college. I'm sure that uh, this program will help you all immensely in improving, enhancing, and sharpening your personality and outlook. Before I call upon our resource person, I would like to introduce her uh, briefly. Well, uh, her name is uh, Dr. Zhou Tanchingi Kiangte. She is uh, working as assistant professor in the Department of English, Borolan University. And she is a former head of uh, English uh, department uh, in Borolan University. She is currently the coordinator for the Center for Women's Studies in Borolan University. She has made immense contributions in literary societies. She is uh, the Joint Secretary of Tribal Literary Forum of India. She is a member of International Society for Folk Narratives and Research. She has been making remarkable contributions in academic field. To name a few, she is the chief editor of Transcript, International Journal of Literature and Cultural Studies. She has author and co-author for books. These books are Orality, Quest for Meanings, Critical Inquiries into Contemporary Thoughts, uh, with uh, Jensenian Philosophy of Religion and Revisiting Orality in Northeast India. She has published uh, several research articles and research journal in research journals, and she had been an invited speaker in many national and international platforms. One MPhil and four PhD scholars have been awarded their degrees under her guidance. She had been a visiting fellow in cultural and creative studies department Nehu Shilong. Last but not the least, she is an alumna of our college. She graduated from our college in 2000. Ma'am, we are truly happy, proud, and excited to have you in our midst this morning. Once again, thanking you, ma'am, for accepting our invitation. Before I call upon a resource person to take her time, I would like to mention that there will be a question and our uh, question and answer round. Uh, all the audience, uh, uh, are free to ask questions and to interact with our resource person once her uh, once uh, she completes her speech okay so uh, uh, when the question and answer uh, uh, when the question and uh, answer session is done our hod mr lelmel soma um, will be invited for a vote of thanks all right uh, without wasting time may um, may i now call upon our resource person to have her session with us ma'am over to you thank you so much uh, am i audible yes ma'am you are uh, audible your voice is loud and clear okay thank you uh, mrs maliani uh, respected hod of the department of geography mr mala i know him only as umala so uh, it's nice to uh, meet you once again at this um, surprising uh, turn of events and which leads me to your uh, to an online meeting in your college and uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to the IQAC uh, Krang Bana College um, the coordinators the department of geography the beautiful um, and always uh, talented uh, host uh, Maliani my roommate at Nehu 
So our history goes back to those times. Anyway, uh, a very good morning to all the students of Rangbana College. And um, it is, for me, it is a wonderful opportunity to uh, meet you all, though I would have loved to meet you physically, but then, you know, this would have to suffice uh, given our, um, uh, well, uh, uh, not normal circumstances. I would not be using the word abnormal as it were because pandemic has been uh, striking humanity uh, for, uh, you know, since uh, centuries ago. So the other day as I was discussing pandemic and literature in this uh, online platform uh, uh, conducted by uh, Pachung University College and we had traced, you know, the origins of pandemic and so on and so forth. But well, the issue today at hand is uh, a discussion about um, empowering through traditionally inherited skills. So uh, without much ado, let us go to business. Well, uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, make myself clear uh, that you know on how i wish to actually go about um this this uh, you know to, uh, with this today's meeting in fact uh, i would love if the students would respond to the queries i put to them uh because that is more interacting in fact i love interaction with students and i'm sure you all do that instead of you know um the usual uh, boring lectures of your teachers. Uh, you know, we uh, teachers, you know, it's, it's very easy from our side of the uh, table to in fact, uh, uh, you know, go on lecturing without much uh, concern for the students' attention. Uh, well, I would uh, love to involve you all in this uh, discussion. First of all, uh, let us first uh, see what is what we mean by empowerment. Um, you know, uh, Michel Foucault had a famous talked about uh, power and knowledge, the link between. Uh, well, uh, excuse me, my. Okay, yeah. Uh, Michel Foucault had famously talked about power and knowledge, you know, the link, the relation between power and knowledge. Knowledge is power. But however, we can also um, say that uh, while knowledge is power, power is also knowledge. You know, when you have power, you have the ability to create knowledge. And when you have knowledge, you also have power. So. Uh, I will not go into the Foucauldian analysis as it were, but I will make it as simple as possible when we talk about empowerment. Um, in fact, uh, to have it very simple, empowerment is a process where individuals learn to see a closer correspondence between their goals and a sense of how to achieve them. So in a way, Empowerment is actually, you know, a process by which there is a closer relationship between your efforts and your life outcomes. And empowerment can be viewed as a process, the mechanism by which people, organizations or communities gain mastery over their lives. In other words, in short, in short what gives you more power is empowering. Well, uh, now, how can life skills uh, act as a way of empowering yourselves? How can uh, rather, you know, we, we, we of, uh, I think there is also um, in, the, in your schedule, I have a brief uh, view of your schedule. And um, in the days to come during this course, uh, life skill is also one of the uh, subjects to be discussed, so I will not go into life skills as it were, but I will be more particular to the uh, traditionally inherited skill as it were. Uh, we all know that life skills definitely uh, can empower us. Life skill includes everything, you know, not only uh, traditional craftsmanship, but 
also your creative thinking, communication skills, and you know the way you uh, uh, look at the world itself. So it's all inclusive. But today we are going to be particularly talking about the um, traditionally inherited like uh, skills. So, what do you mean by traditionally inherited? Now, is it something uh, you know? Um, uh, uh, is it something um, familiar to you, as it were? Uh, what is traditionally inherited? Uh, what is it that we have inherited traditionally? Uh, uh, can any any student respond to this? What do you understand by it? Like, you know, what 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 do you think you have uh, inherited traditionally? Is it something in this world today? Uh, does it at all? Uh, you know, um, still apply. Can you can you can you still identify? Uh, you know, a traditionally inherited skill, as it were, today. Would somebody care? Yes, yeah, students, are you there with me? You can unmute yourself. Yes, I thank you so much. Malsom Donkima has replied, Puanta. Very good. Definitely, that uh, I would say weaving is one of the uh, most glaring examples of traditionally inherited skill. Uh, well, weaving, uh, in fact, uh, basically weaving uh, is usually uh, done by uh, men or women in Mizo society. Come to think of that. In Mizo society, weaving is usually, you know, uh, an engagement of women or men. What is your opinion to that? Teacher in Puan Gan Tachin, yeah, mi Puan Gan Tachin, no? Yes. Again, I have uh, a response, women. Yes. Uh, see, this is how uh, occupations are also uh, gendered, okay? When you ask any Mizo person, now if you ask a guy, perhaps uh, Pumala, your HOD, if you go and ask him, Pumal, uh, perhaps he will be taken aback. In fact, he might be offended saying that Puanta and then, but if you go and ask Pimalian, Pimalian, hunting the Sumi Pati, Tilom, and Ilole, M. Tadetu, E. Major in Canting Island, those are the possible replies that you might be getting. So this is how you see that, you know, uh, certain um, occupations also become gendered over time. Well, that might be necessary because of the demands of time at that moment in history. Perhaps because of the fact that, um, you know, women are uh, better off staying at home and they weave perhaps because of that or meaning or because of you know circumstances prevalent at those times because of the environment during the times that certain occupations are given to women and certain to men but however you know when we talk about intangible cultural heritage uh we must be reminded of the fact that uh, 
intangible cultural heritage, which is transmitted from generation to generation, is very, very importantly, I would say, constantly recreated by communities and groups in response to their environment and their changing circumstances. Therefore, isn't it time for it was uh, then, you know, in the past, and taking that past, that taking the past treasure, in other words, you can say culturally inherited skills, traditions, or okay. Uh, because in today's world, success is no longer about the fact that you have knowledge. It is rather, I would say, it is about what you do with that knowledge that makes you stand out, that makes you successful, and a knowledge that makes you different and unique. And what are Mizo people unique for? What is the uh, generation, the younger generation of Mizoram capable of? Uh, what is your uniqueness? So every every region must have its uniqueness. Every people must have its, its uniqueness. So it is very important for us to reclaim uh, the traditional skills, not only those weaving and basket weaving, uh, weaving cloth and basket weaving, but many other uh, you know skills which has been inherited um, uh, traditionally to be uh, happy, the ability to be happy, the ability to make the best of your life, even though uh, the circumstances must be harsh, is also one of the skills which have been inherited traditionally, I must say, because when you go back to the time when Soram uh, White, so during the Zoram boy, you know, uh, the Mizos, the people were, uh, uh, had to face a lot of difficulties. Uh, they were deeply hurt and, uh, uh, you know, uh, in fact, uh, the pain is indescribable. But how is it that the pain seems to be, you know, uh, not affecting the Mizo psyche so much? It is because during those times when, you know, other people would have, uh, would have um, been so remorseful, they could still laugh, they could still cut jokes. There are evidences of it. If you read uh, the, you know, Mizo history, uh, uh, you know, especially uh, which have been, um, you know, recollected uh, by, Fiction writers uh, uh, like um, in, in, in this novel, especially um, Zorami, a redemption song, which is written by Masumi Jacob uh, and many others, you know, uh, you will see when people, you know, were more engaged, they could still be engaged, would be, uh, you know, uh, they would be, they, they were able to laugh over their silly mistakes and they would be composing songs as it were and they would sing together and dance together that is not possible but uh, that is not at all possible under normal circumstances but because of the Mizo ability to make you know uh, even the worst situation uh, kind of uh, you know light because of the psychological ability to see the best of life is, is of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, traditionally inherited. And you can, this is obvious because of the fact that Mizoram is one of the first to be the happiest in uh, this, uh, in, in India. So that is also one important skill, uh, apart from the traditional craftsmanship. And, uh, you know, so in a way, uh, there are also, uh, we talk, again, when we talk about weaving, 
say for example how can you uh, have a symbiosis between the past and the uh, modern now it is a very important ability which calls for attention in our world today because uh you see example uh, fashion industry is one of the fastest growing industries and mizam is the hub of fashion i would say in at least in northeast india and mizo girls are very fashionable mizo men are also very fashionable and uh, but then you know have you realized that uh, have you can i still be hurt i'm sorry can i still be hurt malian yes you are audible miss you are audible okay 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 thank you um so you see um uh, where were we uh yeah uh yes we were talking about fashion you see uh mizoram as a hub of fashion i see that you know people are very interested in fashion uh the younger generation are very interested and you know that you follow the trends of fashion um you you know uh, one particular fashion goes out of fashion within the uh, you know within within just uh, uh at the blink of an eye i would say okay to exaggerate a little but what happens to this it creates pollution although it's the fastest growing industry fashion industry as it were is also one of the greatest polluting industries it gives a lot of pollution to the world and and our earth has become such that you know it can no longer take this pollution so what do we do uh, perhaps uh, taking it as a call you know uh, mizo uh, mizo uh, uh, younger generations like you all can uh can see your potential in promoting a different kind of fashion let's say green fashion or what we call call uh you know a slow fashion counter to the fast fashion what is slow fashion what is green fashion where well, green fashion or slow fashion is uh motivated by the uh, cultural wears the traditional wears the you know weaving that you do by hand not produced in the you know uh, factories where uh, you know tons and tons of uh, fabric is produced but you weave it and you use it for a long time and the dye the uh, the, the the dye the the color uh, by which you dye the cloth is also such that they are ecologically friendly so mizos have been gifted with that knowledge which we call under um, tks traditional knowledge system so mizo are very rich in this tks where they have the uh, knowledge of you know uh, 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 you know um, natural dyes which we have been using since time immemorial and isn't it time to recall these uh, uh, you know uh potentials of the mizo people that is also one and also like we have also discussed uh, uh it is uh time to change the gendered economic opportunities um where you know uh, both genders uh women or men or the third gender whichever it be gender should not be uh you know uh Uh, the touchstone of um, uh, what one can engage so far as economic opportunities are concerned and also there is also time uh, for uh, uh, you know gender disparity in terms of economic development and uh, when we talk about but when we when we talk about development uh, development is often taken as synonymous to wealth what is development by what you understand i would i would question i would like to question the students as to what you understand by develop what is development according to you dear students i suppose you can unmute yourself or you can text it what do you understand by development inge inge dan development inge inge dan 
Mizo chung in e translate ta ila development hi again yang o. Anybody cares to give a reply to that? Pasona, yes, development is making progress in every aspect of life. Okay, great. Masona, progress, okay. Progress in every aspect of life. Yes, that's also a very important point. Masona can the development he uh, if it is translated in Mizo, Masona, progress, and in every aspect of life is 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 very important. Um well Masona can in uh generally we uh you know see it as synonymous to uh wealth. And the Masona can the Yanin house of nan in hand can take him. Tanguichinta house of na tile progress. Kanti tsangana, kanti tsangana, kan tsangana, kanti rearing hitch on sum he a tam the turin can han can han nai put zela. Is it is it so? Is it necessary to be so? Is the question. Now, what is development? The question now remains what is development? I I think I would go by what Amartya Sen uh the you know famous uh economist the nobel laureate amartya sen in develop in his book development as as freedom uh page uh uh three uh, uh, a process of expanding the real freedoms that people enjoy allowing development is a process of expanding the real freedoms that people enjoy so so there it's not actually about wealth. It, it is not actually about, uh, you know, it, it, it does not have to do, uh, you know, necessarily with more money. Development is about rather, you know, obliterating the unfreedoms, you know. Uh, it is a process by expanding the real freedoms that people enjoy. In fact, you know, economic opportunities might be provided to bring substantive freedom to lead the kind of lives that people value rather than focusing on earning wealth or income for its own sake. Thus, when we look at the economic growth, you know, uh, focus should be at the individual's capability to achieve the kind of life she or he values. So this is how we see development as rather capability expansion. And if we see development as capability expansion, we can expansion. I'm sorry. Uh, poverty can be seen as the deprivation of basic cap capabilities. Tuna mirate can teach a mirate dance one here. Ati do zong tilova e a shomati em em kati tal naita say to to mirate and it to e tuna mi uh e iti do ka di te na opportunity in a tuan ka ka e it uh tangana or masona ka alone it is okay. For example, you know, people are uh, coerced into strenuous activities. For example, if you go to rural areas, you will find that even women, not only men, women all, are also engaged in agricultural activities, strenuous rather, strenuous agricultural activities. They plow the field the whole day under the sun. Uh, uh you know it's not that they enjoy doing that but rather they need they they uh you know need to meet the the demands of the family not because they enjoy it mind you but it is insisted upon them so can you call that development although you know their uh their their toil their hard work might might earn them more money rather than being say engaging themselves in in doing things they love to do Okay, uh, in creating, uh, you know, 
uh, certain items uh, that gives them more pleasure, for example, but they are forced not to engage in that because it is not economically producing. You see, it is not economically as beneficial as the work that they are forced to do. Even though they earn a lot of money, do you think that, you know, that would bring them uh, happiness? Uh, could you really call that a development? Uh, that is the question which is put to us. Mm. So uh, we would say that uh, according to Amartya Sen, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, development comes when these sources of unfreedom are removed. Now, uh, this, and you know what, this deprivation of freedom uh, not only stops there, it contributes to the deprivation of social justice and further leading to social exclusion that affects a person's psychological and physical health as well. So therefore it is very pertinent to explore the areas in which people find pleasure, the activities they value perhaps in the culturally uh, you know, uh, inherited values, perhaps, and at the same time, uh, not only where they find pleasure, but at the same time, which would fetch them uh, not only sustainable income, but if we take it further, if, which would help create ecological awareness. Now, what is that? This is exactly where we come to the traditionally acquired knowledge and skills. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes certain groups or even countries, according to the neo-Marxist dependency theorist, his name was Andre Gunter Frank, um, some countries are deliberately, some groups or countries, you know, um, relatively are deliberately kept in a state of dependency, similar to what he terms as peripheral nations. He was talking, of course, in the context of global, global capitalism and exploitation of the LDCs, which are least developed countries. They are exploited. Why are they kept in this state of dependency, if one asks? It is because, you know, they are uh, to be exploited for the certain benefits of the dominant groups, perhaps for the capitalist class. Now, uh, now this this dependency the state of dependency is also found if you uh, you know if we talk about mizoram uh, you know the state of dependency has uh, uh, you know um, the state of dependency is um, obvious when you see when you go back to the history of mizoram uh, during the 1960s when there were grouping in Mizoram. Now Mizo, Mizoram has not been uh, able to come out of that, uh, as it were, that state, uh, uh, you know, fully or recovered fully, I would say. Um, because, you know, regrouping that time was a deliberate exercise which was carried out to break the spirits of the Mizos. Uh, the experience of regrouping, forced grouping, uh, as recounted by those involved in the heinous exercise is narrated by um, Sajal Nag in his essay, The Pan Optican, uh, when he, uh, you know, recounts the, uh, the words of uh, V.S. Jaffa, who had served as additional district magistrate in Mizoram during the troubled times. Jaffa records his personal experience of the tragedy where he talks about, you know, the Dukupi exercise which was carried uh, out during 1967 to 70. He was talking about the and so on and so forth. And, but the most important thing he said was the romance of Mizo life disappeared forever. This was tragic. In fact, we won't talk at length about that, but what I want to say here is that uh, going by what Sajal Nath says uh, about this experience of grouping, uh, you know, he says that one of the most horrible consequences of regrouping was that um, this possible resettlement shattered the very foundation of the economic and social structure of the Mizos. 
and created a generation of dependence. Now, uh, dependence, uh, depend, uh, 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 in fact, you know, uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, state of dependence, in fact, uh, before the Zoram Bwai, it seems there were many villages like, uh, you know, uh, for example, Darzo, uh, in the accounts of um, writers, we have seen that Darzo and Hat. Uh, 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 Tsang and all those, they were uh, they were very rich villages. Okay, uh, Darzo was one of the richest villages, uh, which, um, according to Jaffa, had uh, you know he he said that it was one of the richest village he had ever seen in this part of the world. There were ample stores of paddy, fowls, and pigs, but you know when when grouping happened all the villagers had to be burnt down. The paddy, the, the cattle, you know, the, the pigs, ev everything, they had to be burnt down. And uh, people were kept in, in, in you know, new, new uh, villages where they were, uh, in fact, given the government rations. So in a way, they were made dependent for their survival, okay? So this, um, you will see that India, since its colonial encounter, had witnessed a lot of change, uh, political, economic, social, uh, that continues in contemporary times through the process of modernization. Um, so I'm going to conclude, you know, soon. Uh, but, uh, you know, change is, uh, is, is uh, not a unique phenomenon of modernization, of course. It has been an essentially universal component of human experience, but uh, it can be said that the rapid pace and proportion of change is a characteristic of modernization. Uh, change in recent times has exacerbated the disadvantaged conditions of people, especially the marginal, uh, the marginal populations like the middle population, population as well. And uh, change, unlike development, which is a value loaded term, is, um, uh, you know, um, is uh, value neutral. It, and it does not necessarily lead to development. All change that does not necessarily lead to development. Change uh, can be, uh, as we, uh, you know, Wilbert Moore had said, it can go. So, what has changed, what was modernization uh, through its change brought to traditional economy like uh, that of the Mizos, if we say, uh, and how has it affected? Uh, it has aggravated, you know, the, uh, uh, the economy has been aggravated by the onslaught of technological advance, industrialization, modernization, and globalization coupled with you know, wide scale destruction of the environment. And therefore, uh, we are, uh, you know, we should that, uh, you know, this calls for reclaiming of traditional potentials, which can meet uh, with modern demands uh, through a recreation and through a symbiosis of the modern and the traditional in order to address the current crisis and alleviate ourselves from the position of marginality. Position of marginality. Uh, so uh, these, uh, these principles of equality, socialism, social justice, which uh, India has promised in its independence calls for uh, uh, not only economic development, but a socio-cultural development as a whole. Uh, simply relying on the good graces of the center package might not essentially be the best solution for Mizoram in the long run. It is important to see development as a desired uh, social change. Uh, let, let us remind ourselves an expansion of freedoms with increased chances of happiness. To have that, it is important to give importance to the cultural values and reclaim the unique potentials of a Mizo. Thank you.
I suppose now it is time for open discussion if there is any. I hand it over to PC Lakanyani. Oh, uh, well, ma'am, uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, having wonderful session with us. Okay, now uh, time will be open for question and answer. Question le answer zo dali chat na hun kan lo mang do na nga azo du te kanin audience sa chang kanin du du azo te ya tu 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 na hun kan lo hong ang mizo chong pon azo te ve kasab chong pon azo te ve ka zo na han ti han pinali zo na ay yanin this oh so how na yes yes at the zo lo mo so that you can also supplement the 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 lecture that I had given you know not just necessary to ask ah right 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 Mm. Yeah, so you know, I do do tan can hold on. So you do nay more can hold on can do not hold on. Yeah, can can audience no pang te can no pang te. Ah, Emma, as a talk of us, so you do nay zo do nay ti te kami puiting ti dan zo kani atu wang zonin. Ah, do not e hun can hold on le so you do nay tan. Hello. Um, cái chương trình sẽ thêm ô. Ô sẽ thêm. Ô um. Um. I lấy cho rồi lấy cái này à, i commerce department này, i rồi na, bố ni chia cho anh lo nha discussion mi xin anh rồi xuyên đâu cái này, tu na ở thi lâu xuôi rong rong ở trong cái này, i development trong trang ha, à biết kinh cái mà ni, i mi sau thì à hi anh này, anh tin nghe, i development năng mà ngay đa nín chả lại thì à, à biết cái kinh, i traditional inheritance thì anh nghe change trong success trong cho anh này i nang mani soy da na kanin kanin open ve kangai da ni eng kong eng kima kan so me kong a chuan he me kan thil ti dan pi le pu te ne na changa kan som kan traditional inheritance hang hian ke development hi ke ni hian ni kan kal pu te ang ti kha advice se mo nang ma ngai da ni mo i opinion na chang kanin i min shil thengem kalom lu tu ke tu chu ka zo na le eng ka suggestion chu ni Thank you so much, Chazwali. Mm, uh, that is a very, uh, that is a wonderful question. Mm, the commerce department, I mean, in Boka, so Vangsan in is on a Boka market, Lama Han Han Poitirila. In fact, uh, yes, uh, that's a very important question that one asks, and how we can promote the, as you said, you know, the uh, intangible cultural heritage and which includes uh, traditional craftsmanship, uh, traditionally inherited skills as, as it were. Uh, in fact, you know, let's face the truth in today's world. Uh, as I had, uh, you know, said in the course of my lecture that it is not enough in our world today to uh, have knowledge and keep that knowledge with us. Uh, rather, how are we going to promote that knowledge? How are, what are we going to do with that knowledge, be it culturally inherited or otherwise? Um, that, you know, we can, we should look at uh, the promotion uh, in the global market. Uh, you cannot ignore, even if we try to, we cannot remain isolated uh, from the world. Um, the world. The world economy has, uh, is now such that we are brought into this global economy, whether you like it or not. Now, the, the challenge which is faced by the traditional craftsmen is that, how am I going to promote this to the global market? Uh, so we have to develop, uh, you know, market strategies. See, uh, let me give you a very brief example. Uh, green tea, can tea, green tea, can tea, can I sang, Engeni i mel chadu zong zong zanin green tea hi an inanga nu ho pei zanin tiel nan an tia pa ho la in i i shiel nan an tia nga nu la la in mel chad nan in tia and green tea you know is uh, much more expensive than the normal tea that you have you know in the department still stores now if you go to these uh, stores you would find that green tea comes with a uh, 
you know, much more expensive package than the normal tea that you have. Although Assam is known for one of the best tea, uh, but then, you know, uh, you know, it can't, can't compete. The normal tea cannot compete with the uh, more exotic tea that you find nowadays, not only green tea, but you have this golden tea, you have silver tea, white tea, and so on and so forth. Why is it that these have become much more expensive? It is because, uh, as, as I have mentioned uh, at the beginning of my lecture, um, let us take recourse to what Foucault had said about knowledge is power and power is knowledge. You see, he says that, uh, uh, you know, power does not concentrate only in one institution, it is diffused. So therefore, uh, you know, when you have power, you build a kind of a knowledge. The knowledge also, like say, green tea, the knowledge that green tea is far superior, uh, far better than the normal tea, the normal uh, black tea that you are used to have. Now, uh, so when that happens, you know, it increases the market rate and it, 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 it you know, occupies a very prominent uh, place in the global market. That is how we sell the product. Now, for example, when we, we were talking about green fashion, uh, we, uh, you know, uh, the market strategies, uh, if market strategies are absent, then you, you won't be going uh, much further but then market strategies when you aim at local market uh, well well and good for example one one uh, the church plays a very major uh, has a uh, plays a very big role a major role like it's, uh, we can say that in promoting the market for mizop one at least locally because the church insists that uh, during church service in mizoram uh, women would be wearing one because you see women uh, we are uh, you know whether we like it or not we are uh, seen as tradition bearers but what if uh, men also it's 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 quite uh, difficult to to expect them to wear one uh, of course uh, but uh, you know uh, at least the church uh, you know promotes this uh, uh, the church promotes um, uh, this use of one, the traditional one, and thus it saves the local market, for example. Likewise, what is it that, but if, if you try to sell one in the global market, it won't, uh, it won't sell uh, much because that is not the demands that the, uh, the global market would be having. How are you going to refashion it? How are you going to uh, make it more attractive for the global market? And you have to research on the benefits um, of, you know, uh, um, uh, traditional wares, how is it ecologically uh, beneficial, so on, so forth, uh, you know, uh, I would say, yes, you need market strategies for that. I think I answer your question. Am I audible? Are you still mm. there? Yes, ma'am. Well. Mm. <laughs> yes, miss, uh, you are audible. Yeah. Okay. John Midanka, so I do Nathan can only and all me down. What do you may I can he can him rope me? A long angle took ma'am. Hmm. Oh, like can can on go on the record. Okay, miss. Uh, one question from uh, my side. So Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. May I know okay, who's okay, speaking? Miss. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for your um, interactive session and it is very informative. So my question is uh, this, the challenges faced uh, in this traditional uh, product in ISOL is the price. So uh, how to tackle this price competition with this uh, artificial uh, stuffs? like clothes and all ma'am actually we can buy in very cheap clothes about this uh, these stuffs about the non-traditional stuff so according to your opinion uh, how how the prices of our traditional dress and all can can be a little bit you know like cheaper for market prices so what is your opinion on this thank you so much uh in fact that is also that is a pertinent question often asked when we talk about uh, uh, 
you know, indigenous products, when we talk about uh, hand, uh, handicrafts and all those. In fact, that is a very, uh, that is a question to be, uh, you know, addressed uh, also by the government because, uh, you know, uh, see on one hand, as you have rightly pointed out, the hand woven, for example, the hand woven cloth is, uh, um, far more expensive than the factory produced cloth. Now factory produced cloth, why do you can have it for uh, 200 uh, rupees, then the hand woven would cost you more than a thousand. Now to address such uh, issues, in fact, that is what we are saying that uh, the factory produced ones because of its, uh, you know, availability uh, at that to at cheap rates, uh, in a way it also uh, uh, you know, it, it, uh, produces this uh, or responsible for fast fashion. That is why fashion changes, you know, very soon. Uh, rather, that is what we were saying, slow fashion. If we can uh, condition the people, you know, condition, knowledge is all about conditioning. How you think, what you are, is all about your conditioning. Sometimes you are culturally conditioned into thinking that this is the truth, this is right or this is wrong. For one culture, if this is right, for another culture, it might be very wrong. So, but it depends on cultural conditioning. And nowadays it is all about information sharing. Now, uh, technology is very advanced and uh, or just knowledge is not enough, but information sharing. Now, if uh, again, we talk, we come to market strategies again. How to uh, uh, make these, uh, you know, products uh, at a cheaper rate? Now that is a question which would involve a lot of uh, factors. Like we said, uh, if you, if say for example, uh, if you're you're convinced that gold is something which is very valuable, and it and therefore the price of gold is uh, much, much higher, much higher, extremely higher than a slice of bread. But you need bread or you need, you need rice for your sustenance. What is more required for you? Twenty liters of water, he had filtered water. Uh, mineral water can not uh, be Of course, that's a misnomer. But then, um, the package water is twenty liters. See, it costs here. It costs thirty rupees. Thanks, some thumin can lay at twenty liters. See, ma se twenty kgs of gold low lay tumla some thanks some thum chan ilay thay tap lo ma se kung e poy mozo puy e poy mozo bufay e poy mozo ma se ka ka gold ka. A flu ang a ingay a wangkan i wastan takpek ka i in huam tani so wang tuanin i hehe mimal ina ti thay ni lawin ah eh eh i change he you know a change can be brought about of course through efforts and it depends really I would say on people who control the market. And you can be one because you are of the young generation. You can build this. You can condition the the psyche of the of the young to go for slow fashion, which although you might be needing to pay more for that, but it is much more valuable. Thank you so much, ma'am. Midang zo du ne la o memo, soy du ne. An om to lo an yang an ngoi deu cha pa zonin now um I call upon our HOD Sarmala to give a word of thanks. A very good afternoon to one and all. On behalf of the Department of Geography, Government Frankbada College, I would like to express my gratitude to all delegates of the webinar for your presence and uh, contribution to make this webinar uh, a great success. Firstly, I would like to thank our distinguished speaker, 
Ms. Zhou Tanqing Kiangte for making an excellent presentation and making this webinar a very meaningful and interesting. Ma'am, we are fortunate to have you here in our webinar. A special thanks to Pula Rochuanga Pacho, our principal and chairman, IQSE, Government Sangbana College, for his immense support to make the webinar successful. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Albiak Zuali, coordinator IQSE, for taking initiative of a series of webinar, even amidst the pandemic. Miss, without your initiative and guidance, this program would not be materialized. Finally, the wonderful students who have turned up in such great numbers from different core subjects today, I hope and wish you all benefited from this program. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Once again, thank you all. Mm. Okay, now um, we have come to the end of our session. Um, everyone is free to leave the uh, webinar, the Zoom meeting. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.